declare the loom from scratch. Okay, we're getting to the home stretch of the second page already. Can you believe it? All right. So uh, we've just finished mapping out measure 23. Now let's move on to measure 24, which happens to fall on the next line. So what we're going to do is you, I kind of try to anticipate that and uh, kept the previous measure kind of to the left. We're going to copy this over and push, put this to the right of that. Okay, let me see if I can go back up a bit. And there we go. Let's remap this over here. Sometimes these programs don't behave as nicely as I'd like them to, but that's no problem. Here we go. And let's kind of map that out like so. Okay, good. All right, that's close enough. Good. So let's, let's go ahead and get started right away on he, this portion over here and find out what that note is. Okay, so from F, the F line over here, we can see we're right down below. So that's an E flat octave. Okay. Now, before we look at the rest of the left hand notes, let's take a look at the right hand notes and see if we can find these. All right. So from the G line, okay, here we see that these are Bs, or we change these to B flat. Okay. Now I know that these are octaves, so I'm going to save us a little bit of time. Okay. And we can see we have four of these. Okay. And take a look, we have four of these octaves, and then it changes and moves a little bit higher. See that? To the C, comes back right down to the B flat. So it looks like that. Okay, and let's take a look at the, the last two as well. B flat, C, D, flat, and then the very next note over here, E flat over here. Okay, those are octaves. So let's take a look at just the octave portions without the inside notes. D flat, E flat. See how that works? Okay. Now, let's go ahead and add the inside notes, okay, inside those octaves, okay. Let's just take it from, since we know that's a B flat on top, okay, we can deduce what, this is a G flat down here, okay. So, for those four, and then we move up, and as the octave moves up, you can see that this move, note also moves up, so from a G flat, we move to an A flat in the middle there, okay. So, Again, you can use your cookie cutter hand, okay? See, I'm using 531 for all of these, okay? So for a fingering, you can just simply use 531 for most of the measure, okay? And look how this cookie cutter shape kind of travels up to the D flat. So from, from the B flat over here, okay? Uh, we had the B flat and D flat over here, okay? Now this G flat, A, B flat, the B flat on the top becomes the middle note over here. So we have D flat, excuse me, I'm, I was writing this previous chord wrong, forgive me. This is what happens when I talk too fast. B flat, G flat, okay, and then we go for D flat and G flat over here, okay. So now just move over, same fingering. Now things are going to change just a little bit for this one, okay. If you notice, Okay, let's take a look at the inside of this. We had D flat, B flat, and D flat on the bottom here. Take a look at this middle note. This middle B flat is going to stay there. Okay, these two notes are identical. So the octave is going to go from D flat to an E flat octave, but this is going to stay the same. So that's going to necessitate a, a fingering change. Okay, okay. If, if you want to, you could keep the same, or another option is to do this. It's really up to you. you in fact, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just keep the finger the same because it's, I don't think it's worth all the trouble of changing the finger. It's really up to you. If you want to, one option would be 5-3 and change to 5-2 here. But for now, you can also just as easily keep your third finger here because it looks like it's not going to deform your hand too much. Really, it's up to you. If your hand doesn't feel comfortable, you have that other fingering option. So for now, I'm going to just keep the fingering the same, but know that you can do 5-2 or 3 and one like that, okay? Now let's quickly look at the left hand notes. Here, we started off with the E flat octave. Now, take a look. Now we're jumping to the treble clef. So we have to re-read our notes with that G clef in mind. So right off the bat, we see that G is right on our G line over here. Okay, G, F, E, D over here. Okay, D, uh, so G flat, D flat, and a B flat over here, okay? What I'm going to ask you to do, 
I'm going to ask you to kind of use a, a, a kind of a connecting fingering, even though these are cookie cutter shapes, okay? I'm going to ask you to, uh, let's just see, I think this will be a little bit easier. It's one thing when we're working with octaves. It's another thing when we're working with a smaller interval group. It's easier to kind of using interchangeable fingers. So that's the reason why we're not using the cookie cutter sh fingerings for the left hand. So here's the rec fingering that I'm going to recommend moving on, okay? So one, three, and five, okay? These four are the same. Now everything moves up by one. So just to save you time, A flat, E flat, C, and C over here, and we're going to use a one, two, four, and then it returns. Okay? So if you want to practice that, one, two, four, one, three, five. See how that works? Okay? And now we have a new hand change over here. So it's a little tricky. We move to a new position over here, G, A, B flat. G flat, D flat over here, and we're going to use one, two, five. Okay? So we've got some very distinct fingerings for these chords, and now we're going to jump up to a one, two, five. Okay, you notice that these top two notes stay the same, and then this just moves to that fourth finger, so these stay the same. Okay? So it may take a little bit of practice just to find the shape of all those chords, but you'll feel after you've worked on it a little bit that it actually fits the hand really nicely. Okay, so with a little bit of practice, this will get comfortable. Let's see how this whole measure sounds and looks. Okay, so here, E flat, beginning of the measure. Okay. Change the fingering here, cookie cutter shape in the right hand. Back to that fingering here, cookie cutter shape here. Okay, one, two, five. Now, I'm going to go ahead and recommend that you keep things simple in the right hand, maybe just keep it the same. So one more time. Okay? And I'm probably going to recommend that you change the pedal because it is going to get a little bit muddy if the, all these sounds blend together too much. So the pedal I'm going I'm to recommend is probably going to be something along the lines of changing here and then changing here. Okay, so here, let's hear what that sounds like. Change. I missed that. Let's do that one more time. Change. Okay, so that's going to be my recommendation for you. Again, notice the rhythm. Let me just kind of map up the rhythm for you very, very quickly before we close our lesson. Again, duples. Let me just kind of get rid of some of the extra yellow so we don't get too confused, okay? So yellows, do, pull, do, pull, do, pull, and let's go back to our blues for the triplets, okay? Bumblebee, bumblebee, bumblebee. Now notice we have uh, another set of bumblebees, the full set over here, okay? So this is what it's going to sound like from the previous. Let's start all the way from back here. Put this all together, okay? Ready? And buzzing, ready? Buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. Now ready? Bumblebee, bumblebee, bumblebee. That's how we move through. Obviously, I'm going a little fast, but uh, try to keep that in mind as you're learning this slowly. Okay? So, challenging couple of measures, but we're almost at the home stretch of this page. Okay, great. I'll see you at the next lesson.